Stratford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Prime Minister gave a commitment that she would treat Scotland as part of a union of equals. Yet last night, she pressed ahead with a power grab in direct opposition to Scotland's elected parliament. The Prime Minister silenced Scotland's voice, having broken constitutional convention and plunged Scotland into a constitutional crisis. Will the Prime Minister now commit to bringing forward emergency legislation so that the will of the Scottish Parliament can be heard and, more importantly, respected. Can I say to the right hon. Gentleman that we do expect that the outcome, and it will happen, that the outcome of the whole process of Brexit is going to be a significant increase in Holyrood's decision-making power. It is not it is not the case that this is in any way a power grab. Uh, we over 80 areas of uh, responsibility of decision making are going to flow direct to Holyrood. Only the SNP could say that getting 80 areas where they go more areas where they're going to take decisions was a power grab. If he wants to be concerned about the process that this house has followed in relation to the legislation His real question should be why it was the Labour Party who manoeuvred last night, used procedural manoeuvres to ensure that there was no debate about the amendments referred to on Scotland. Ian Blackford! Mr Speaker, I really do hope that the people of Scotland listen very carefully to what the Prime Minister said, because the reality of the situation is that powers that are enshrined under the Scotland Act in 1998 are being grabbed back by this. It is a power grab, and the MPs from Scotland were not given the courtesy of even debating it last night. It is a democratic outrage. The people of Scotland will not be disrespected by this Parliament. Mr Speaker, under the circumstances, given the disrespect that is shown, I have got no option but to ask that this House now sits in private. I'm not hearing that at this time, and I'm not obliged to do so, is my clear understanding. Order, the Honourable Gentleman. Order! The Right Honourable Gentleman can resume his seat. I'll happily take advice, but I don't think I'm obliged to hear that at this time. Well, what I would say to the Right Honourable Gentleman is, I think the standing order requires that the matter be put, if it is to be put forthwith, in order, order, it might be for the convenience of the House for the matter to be addressed at the conclusion of Prime Minister's questions, and if the Honourable, Right Honourable Gentleman, who had not signalled to me his intention to do this now, wish order, 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 I mean, well, uh, I'm always grateful for the moral support of the Right Honourable Lady, the member for Broxter, even when it is chunted from a sedentary position, I realise that it's done for my benefit, but I think I can handle the matter. We could have the, we could have the vote now, but we could, order, we could have a vote now, and, or it could be taken at the end. If the Honourable Gentleman which is to indicate a desire to conduct such a, a vote now. So be it. Right. I, I beg to move. I, I beg to move. Well, my advice, I've had a mixed sequence of advice, is that oh, order, this has not happened, but order. My view is that it is better for the vote to be conducted. Order. My view is that it is better for the vote to be conducted at the conclusion of questions to the Prime Minister. No, I'm not. Order. 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 I always admit of the maximum number of votes and divisions, as the right honourable gentleman should know from his experience in the House. But I hope that he will trust me that I know of what I speak. There can be a division, and it will be at the end of this session, not now. That is the end of the matter. The Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, might I ask... No, no, I'm not debating. No, resume your seat. Resume your seat. Mr Blackford, no, I'm... No, you're not moving anything. Resume your seat, young man. Resume your seat. No, no, no. Mr Blackford, resume your seat. No, no, resume your seat. Resume your seat. Mr. 
Mr Blackford, I'm... Order! 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 The House will have heard very clear... Order! Please. The House will have heard very clearly my acceptance that there can be a vote on this matter. Order! Mr Linden, I say to you, and I say it in the kindest possible spirit, don't tell me what the procedures of this House are. I'm telling you that there can be a vote at the end of this session, and not now. I'm not going to... No, no, Mr Blackford, order, 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 under the... Resume your seat, Mr Blackford. Under the power given to me by Standing Order No. 43, in light of the persistent and repeated refusal of the Right Honourable Gentleman to resume his seat when so instructed, I order the Right Honourable Gentleman to withdraw immediately from the House for order for the remainder of this day's sitting. He is so in... Right, he won't. Right, well, we'll have to have the vote. Very well. Very well. Very well. Order, 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 order. Order, 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 Mr. Chair Wardener. You're a very jocular fellow, but you're a little over excitable today. Calm, long time to go. I say order. I say only to the House, order! I say only to the House, what a pity, because there are Scottish National Party members of Parliament who had questions on the order paper. And as colleagues know, I always like to get to the end of the order paper. They would have had their chance, and they've lost that chance by their own choice. Mr Luke Hall. 